When my daughter learned to add and subtract, the teacher put a piece of masking tape on each student's desk, gave them a frog, and says, when you add or subtract, just jump the frog from number to number. So if you put the frog on 1, 1 plus 3, you, you jump the frog three times, 2, 3, 4. 1 plus 3 is 4. If you subtract, you jump the frog backwards, 4 minus 2, 4, 3, 2. You jump the frog backwards, 4 minus 2 is 2. Now, after a few days of doing this, the teacher went around and pulled the masking tape off of each student's desk. Then in the student's mind, they had this picture, and when this, the teacher would give them an addition or subtraction problem, the little frog would jump in their mind. And over time, it became muscle memory, or it was just automatic that 4 plus 2 was 6. Well, that's what we want to do with risk management tools. You've got these different tools that are are probably jumbled in your mind, and we want you to we want to put them together, put this puzzle together, so that you see the flow or the impact of each tool on price and how price fits in the system. So we organize everything so that you've got this nice clean picture as we go through the, the system. Let's start with price. Now that's in the upper left hand corner if you'll remember the, the picture. And price is the actual dollars per unit received. Now it may include the cash price. It may be determined by a forward contract price. It may be a combination of prices. Uh, you sell the product or your commodity for a cash price but you've got a gain or loss from uh, using a, a futures contract or a futures option contract. And that is added to for gains or subtracted from for losses to determine the actual price. The single most in, important thing to remember is that the price is equal to the futures contract price plus the basis. In all commodity, futures traded commodities, this formula will hold. If you don't remember anything else, this is that tape laid under your desk. The price is equal to the future price plus the basis. Let's say the basis at your local elevators is a minus 40 cents. That means that if the futures contract price is $4.50, then the price posted at that elevator would be $4.10. The futures contract plus the basis, which is a minus 40, so you subtract it. Now let's go to the futures price. Well, that's just the price of a futures commodity uh, contract. It can maybe for wheat, corn, beans, cotton, oats, uh, live cattle, fat cattle, feeder cattle, hogs, any traded, uh, any commodity that has a futures contract that's traded. The basis, now we're going over this top line on the on the top of your, your puzzle there. The price is equal to futures price plus the basis. The basis is really just the difference between two prices. But now how we use the, the basis in this case is it's the elevators or the, the buyers or it could be the seller. It's a combination of their cost and their profit level. So an elevator may have an in and out cost of 30 cents and a, they want a profit of 10 cents per bushel. That means the basis would be a minus 40 cents. The basis is set at the, at the local auction or elevator and it's set by the buyer or it could be set by the seller through negotiation. So you've got the price is equal to futures price plus the basis. Now, if you want to calculate the basis, you can move the futures price on the left-hand side of your equation, and it would be cash price minus futures contract price is the basis. But for, for our purposes, we want the futures contract price, and we want the basis that's posted or offered by the buyer or maybe the seller if, if we're buying things like fertilizer or whatever. Now let's talk about a forward contract. Now forward contract has five parts, five things specified. It's got the quantity, it's got the quality, it's got the delivery period or time, the location of delivery, and the price. The key to remember about a forward contract is, is that these five 
items are negotiated between the buyer and the seller. It's a private note negotiation between two people. So if you, you put it in the puzzle, your forward contract price is directly, it directly determines your price, but it's still a function of the futures price and the basis. Let's say the elevator is uh, offering a, a basis of a minus 50 cents and that the futures contract is trading at $4.75. That means that you'll be able to forward contract for future deliver at $4.25. The forward contract locks in the futures price and the basis. In other words, it doesn't matter if they change and the and the futures price you know will change between the time you sign the forward contract and delivery the basis may or may not change but irrespective it fixes the price at four dollars and twenty five cents talk about a futures contract now the futures contract is essentially the same as a forward contract it has the five parts the quantity the quality the period or time that it's for delivery, the location of delivery, and a price. The difference between the futures contract and a forward contract is, is that with a futures contract, the quantity, the quality, the period, and the location are all fixed. They're the same for every contract. In a futures contract, the price is determined at auction. In a forward contract, each of these items are negotiated between the seller and the buyer or the buyer and the seller. So that's the only difference between a futures contract and a forward contract is how quantity, quality, period, location, and price are determined. Forward contract, negotiated. Futures contract, quantity, quality, period, and location are fixed and price is determined at auction. Now in our puzzle, the futures contract has a direct impact or determination of the futures price. It has no impact on the basis. So let's say our basis is a minus 40 cents and our futures contract is $4.50. That means that our futures price is $4.50 and if we hedge, in other words, we sell a futures contract if we're delivering a commodity such as corn, oats, uh, wheat. We, we sell a futures contract, we lock in that $4.50 price, and we have an expected hedge price or expected net price of $4.10, but that $4.10 is an expected price. It is not a locked in price like the forward contract was because the hedge or using a futures contract locks in the futures price, it does not lock in the basis. You still have basis risk, and if how that basis changes will impact your net price. Let's talk about a put option contract. And an option contract is just that. It gives you the right, and with a put, it's the right to sell. In other words, if I've got wheat and I buy a put option contract, it gives me the right to sell at a specific, on a futures contract, at a specific price. And the premium is, is, is essentially that price, but it's, it's determined after you already own the, the contract. So let's say that uh, I have a put option contract. Note that it impacts the futures contract price, not the basis. It indirectly affects price through the futures contract price. So if the futures contract is say 450 and I buy a, a $4.50 put at 30 cents, that means that I've locked in a minimum price for selling my wheat on the futures contract of $4.50. Of course I got to take out my 30 cent cost before I get to price, but that's another story that we'll cover in another segment. It does not have any influence or impact on the basis. So with a put option, I'm going to protect against lower prices. I'll protect my futures uh, price. If the futures prices go up, then I can ignore my 450 put and sell at the higher price. If the future prices go down, say $4, 
Then I lock in my 450 by exercising my option. A call option contract gives me the right to buy. Remember, a put is the right to sell. A call option contract gives me the right to buy a futures contract at a specified price. Now, I, the buyer, specify the commodity, which contract I'm buying. I, I select a strike price, which I didn't talk about on the, uh, the, the put option contract, but I, I select a price, and then that price, the premium that I pay for it, is determined at auction. So the call is option of a put. A put is the, the option to sell. A call is the option to buy. Both, the thing to remember is that they both influence the futures contract price and not the basis. So let's say I buy a $4.50 call option contract. In other words, I, the buyer, can select different strike prices, 450, 460, 470, 430. I subtract, I select which price I buy, and then it's the, that my premium, say 30 cents, is determined at auction. But again, it influences the futures price, not the basis. And say that uh, with the call, say the price goes up to $5. Well, am I going to buy at 450 or 5? Well, I'm going to I'm going to exercise my option and buy at 450. What if the futures price goes to four dollars? Then I'm going to buy at four dollars and ignore my option. So what we see is that we we take these risk management tools and we organize them so that we can see the flow of each items, each methods impact on price like forward contract. It has whatever your forward contract price is the price. No change in futures price, no change in the basis. It locks in everything. A futures contract only locks in the futures price. It has nothing to do with the basis. The, you still have basis risk. A put option contract influences the futures contract price, setting a floor for it. A call option contract only works through the futures contract to influence the futures price, and it puts a ceiling on it. We'll talk more about the impacts of each of these and how to calculate using each of these risk, price risk management tools in the next video section.